last time I explained to you uh, what are bridge and stability and showed some uh, mm, equations for stability in complex case and then some simple version of non-archimedian case. And now I'll discuss uh, relation with Mumford stability. Kind of, it will be kind of a subtle recollection of Mumford uh, geometric invariance theory and Hamiltonian reduction. Uh, so, uh, uh, that's uh, uh, story which was invented by Mumford in late 60s. So, we can start with absolute case first. Uh, suppose K is a field. And for simplicity, assume that it has characteristic zero. Uh, and X will be a fine algebraic variety. Could be singular in principle. Could have mid potents. Okay, I, I want to uh, just to be one variety. And G will be reductive group. And it should act on X. And the definition is that what is J T quotient in this case? It will be another fine variety. Yeah, so it's. it's so I think it goes from a fine variety to another fine variety, which will be spectrum of algebra of invariance. You take algebra functions, it takes uh, some fine dimensional representation, take contribution of trivial representations, subalgebra, get another fine variety. And it's finitely generated by Hilbert theorem, so it's kind of finite type. And uh, uh, but there is something funny here and kind of not obvious. Let's define a relation on, let's say, set of points of the break closure. And namely, we say that two points are equivalent, uh, related if, uh, if you take two orbits, then the, the closures and uh, they have common point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's obviously uh, um, um, uh, a point equivalent to itself. It's symmetric, but why it's, uh, why it's uh, uh, transit, it's, it's and the effect, the risky closure, it is transitive. <laughs> it's not obvious at all. It's not obvious at all. Uh, uh, yeah, for example, mm, one can imagine kind of uh, one should use a fine variety in some uh, property to be affine because imagine CP1, uh, like, you know, like CP1 and get C star action. No, a group is reductive, yeah. but you have three orbits and Middle one equivalent to zero to infinity, but zero and infinity are not equivalent. Yeah. And what uh, what here uh, really goes on is that if it's uh, if it's kind of uh, if it's non-transitive, then one can contract by one parameter group one things to another things. So get and you get closed curve and get and get CP one. Yeah. So essentially, think it's to be not affine, not contained any closed curve. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then it implies this this property. Okay. So it's first fact. Uh, then, uh, then it's easy to form from terms. It's any equivalence class class contains unique closed orbit. So the canonical representative is this closed orbits, and how it's related to this uh, abstract story. Then, if consider a uh, uh, set of points by this equivalence relation. The same as closed orbits, union of closed orbits, orbits by G, and this will be this exactly this JT quotient. Yeah. Now, so one can uh, just this is only one example one have to know about the story. Let X will be a fine plane, and G will be GM acting with weights one and minus one. So, so we get. What we get uh, this hyperbola and equivalence classes are the following. I, as you can write, kind of like okay, hyper, uh, hyperbola where x y is equal to constant t 
which is non-zero, or you can take coordinate cross, which consists of two or three orbits. And only one is closed. And the quotient, of course, is a fine line. It's just spectrum of polynomial synthesis variable t, which is product of two variables. Mm. And notice that uh, this uh, one can define this uh, subset consisting of disjoint union of closed orbits and call it something like polystable. Uh, part, it's actually very bad. It's neither open nor, co uh, nor closed. It's some kind of horrible constructible subset. It's not a scheme. Just constructible, not closed, not open, constructible subset. And then why, uh, that's why uh, people in trade journal do not speak about it, because it's not part of this general uh, story, but secretly this is this um, that guy. Okay, that's absolute story, and then there is kind of relative. Ah, and m maybe before continuing, I just want to say that uh, just to understand this JT quotient, uh, this all questions reduced to questions of linear representations. Because uh, let's take other of x, it's finitely generated. And choose some subspace with generated. Choose subspace called V star, which is generate the whole algebra, and also G invariant because it's some of finite dimensional representation. So you can always any set expect to finite dimensional representation. Choosing the subspace, it means that you embed X into V, which is kind of linear representation of G. It will be quotient of symmetric algebra. So, so it means that O of x will be symmetric algebra generated by V star functions on V divided by some ideal. And everything is G invariant. And if we take invariance, we take G by G. So, get, so, it, so it implies that x cross G is a closed subset in V cross G. So in principle, if you want to study the JT quotient, it's enough to study linear representation. But Mm. It's kind of not obvious, and it here's there's another you point kind of closed orbits in X will be closed orbits in V. So it's, it's another way to see the same embedding, but it's kind of not really obvious relation between functions and closeness and these things. Okay, now I'll go to a relative case. Uh, um, so x will be not, 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 not no longer affine. x will be not necessarily affine, not neither projective. But it will should have ample line bundle. Ample bundle and endowed with g action and everything. And uh, what I want. There's really no good name. I called it a uh, proch type situation. Uh, in this case, we have x. Uh, we have a, a, an embedding to x to proch of some graded algebra. Take sum of all n greater than zero, gamma x l to power n. We get graded algebra, but it's all already will be infinite dimension, even degree zero in principle. And you get thing. And I want it to be uh, isomorphism, so, so it's the approach of some graded algebra. And what is typical situation? What one half and half x projects to some affine base, and fibers are projective. So it's uh, everything could be as singular as you want. So it will be family of projective things over affine base, and L will be. Uh, ample bu bundle which is ample on fibers. And, and then he here's this definition of the JT quotient, and here, here I kind of make up notation 
using this uh, GSEC everywhere. everywhere. Yeah, suppose GSEC acts everywhere. So this uh, quotient, which depends on the choice of the sample bundle, uh, will be we just repeat the formula. You take proj of this direct sum, blah blah, and you take invariance. Good. And uh, what you see it's because it's proj, it's a, it's kind of the same situation. You 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 reconstruct the same things with sample bundle of proj type because it's defined as to be proj. And what happens in this situation uh, that in this case, uh, x cross g will again have some line bundle, uh, which will maps to y cross g without any line bundle. Yeah, and it will be affine, and and it will be projective. Yeah, so you kind of uh, repeat the same uh, thing, and. Uh, there is some kind of difference between this uh, uh, relative situation and absolute situation. In absolute situation, any point of x gives some orbit, you take its closure, take closed orbits in, inside, you get point in the quotient. But here, not every point gives a point in the quotient. Point in Uh, only some open part of X will produce this quantum quotient. Will be some part which is called semi-stable. Uh, it could be, uh, yeah. Usually it's dense open, yeah. Yeah. In principle, these guys could be empty. Uh, uh, kind of theoretically, I can say that these things are vanished. For all, uh, oh no, no. And in this situation, they will be not empty. Yeah. It will be dense open in X. And uh, what is it? Uh, how maybe I'll just draw a picture on the other side. <coughs> mm. So you consider uh, total space of line bundle. It contains zero section, which is x. Now I take point in x, lift it somewhere, doesn't matter because of risking, and start to act with the group. And what can happen if the orbit of group can get point x and get point x tilde, if closure of or orbit uh, intersect with zero section is empty. Then I get point in, in, in uh, then it will be point in x is stable and you can make uh, the orbit. Yeah, so it's yeah, so it's formal definition. It's set of x tilde with one total space minus zero section. So the orbit intersecting with zero section is empty and up to rescaling. So it's, it's, some, it's not clear from this definition it's open part, but it's, it is open part. And, and there is again a uh, kind of polystable thing which corresponds to closed orbits in the whole story, kind of closed orbits. But it's kind of bad, it's not scheme. But good from our point of view that it represents all equivalence classes, so XPS over G. Okay. Yeah. So there's a kind of new notion, semi-stable, which appears in relative situation. In this thing. Mm. Uh, how? I will, now it's time to go to example. And as example, uh, uh, yeah, uh, this representation occurs. In fact, uh, this picture was really. Uh, Discussed not in Mumford but uh, by Alistair King. Yeah, so somehow it was took many many years, about twenty years, to get to this 
uh, important but simple generalization. Uh, so I take a uh, finite quiver. Vertices, arrows. Uh, I will be vert denote vertices of the quiver, and we'll have representation of certain dimension di. Uh, so the group will be product of group G L D I, and rep uh, my space X will be actually a representation. V may be called, it will be a uh, product of affine spaces over all arrows with the i, dj. Uh, so it will be um, entries of rectangular matrix uh, from d dimensional space to dj dimensions. So point of this uh, space will be representation queer in coordinate spaces. You mean labeled by the, the arrows? By the arrows. arrows, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for each arrow should kind of specify arbitrary elements of rectangular matrix and group acts by conjugation. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's actually a fine space uh, and a fine variety, but uh, and line bundle will be trivial bundle O, but with non-trivial G action. It's a fine, trivial, yeah, everything is a fine, yeah. But uh, as a quotient, you get something non-affine. Yeah. J action is uh, uh, given by character. And character will be the following. Element of the group, which is collection of uh, square matrices, goes to product over i, determinants of Ji to some power Ai, Vai, maybe some integer numbers. OK. Mm. Uh, yeah, if sum of E i dimension uh, whatever D i is not equal to zero, then there is no uh, uh, no semi-stable point because uh, kind of rescaling uh, acts in the fiber and contracts everything to two points in the base. This x semi-stable is empty, and quotient is empty. If, if the sum is not zero, then you act by diagonal matrices. Yes. And then you see that it doesn't change, uh, then it contra contracts uh, m to zero, so you get nothing. Yeah, so it should have this uh, uh, equality. And then, uh, turns, uh, then easy kind of, if uh, there is some kind of. Uh, uh, evaluative criterion by, uh, by Mumford to see whether the point is um, stable or not. You get one parameter subgroup, and if you translate it in language of representation of Q, you get the following. Point is, uh, oh, X is semi-stable if and only if this representation of a Q is semi-stable in sense which I uh, described in my first lecture. If uh, you get corresponding representation of Q, that for any sub representation, which is non zero, uh, sum over a, a i dimension of E prime i is, uh, mm, I think, less than zero. You get this inequality. Mm. And uh, and polystable, ah, by the way, uh, uh, semi-stable representation is given slope form abelian category, and there are simple objects in this abelian category, which are not simple representation queers, and polystables are uh, uh, exactly uh, direct sum of simple objects in such, in, in this category. And for simple objects, you get strict, in, it means that you get strict inequality, so. So it will be semi-simple objects in some, a billion category. Mm. Yeah, and uh, ah, so there is this. So this 
uh, such a simple story. And what is going on when you consider this quotient? Even that was a V of x, you don't know this representation V with this line bundle to G is neither projective nor affine. It maps to V cross G without a thing which is affine variety and which is an uh, algebra generated by uh, traces of all possible uh, cyclic loops, modular relations which universally held in this direction, some ideal. And at the end of the day, it will be finite dimensional algebra for given dimensions. And, and factors are projective and usually high dimensional could be. Yeah, so it's, uh, you get this uh, 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 thing. And how it's related to my general picture, it's, it's kind of very uh, stupid to consider identity map. But here you end up with line bundle, and here forget line bundle. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of uh, 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 looks stupid, but uh, uh, even for identity map, when here fibers are point and the quotient get you get high dimensional fibers. Yeah, so it's it's strange. Okay, yeah. So it was a short introduction to general algebraic story. But now, what is what goes on? We have uh, we speak about something maybe non-compact guys with ample bundles. <coughs> and ample bundles uh, suggest some that we get Keller matrix. Mm. Yeah, integer, uh, we have Keller matrix is integer uh, Keller class because we get actual bundle. Uh, and the idea of Hamiltonian reduction is the following. That if on X we have Keller metric, not just ample class, then on the quotient we also get Keller metric. Yeah, so it will be kind of a way to enhance this to uh, Keller geometry. So now, if k is equal to c, we have yeah. So uh, uh, it will be uh, go from just Keller class to Keller matrix under certain assumptions. Yeah, so should I remove? L let's start with absolute case first. So we get a fine variety. Uh, and a fine variety can be embedded in vector space. And on vector space, we consider. functions like this, some function which goes to infinity, to at infinity and plurisubharmonic. Yeah, so that's uh, the whole story. One can speak about plurisubharmonic functions on singular varieties. Uh, uh, and so one can fix function from C to R, maybe just positive values, which will be plurisubharmonic. Uh, I don't want to. Uh, spend the time, but if it will be manifold, it will be like DD bar will be positive, uh, but in singular points it's something, so it uh, defines some kind of scalar metric on a singular variety, um, and it goes to infinity, it's proper map. That's the only property which you need. And now assume that phi is, <coughs> actually you can also make as, as strict as so this second derivative will be Keller form, like restriction for these things from embed space. And I can ask phi to be invariant under 
maximal compact subgroup, like unitary group. Now, this is not a big deal. You take any function, just average. By compact group, you get invariant function. And uh, then, in this case, there is a famous mm, Kempner theorem. Uh, that orbit g of x is closed if and only if, if this function restricted to orbit achieves the minimum. So this is the form. If if a uh, function is close, uh, uh, um, if if the orbit is close, function goes to infinity, and that should achieve some critical point. But because of invariance, all critical points could be only minima. Uh, let me explain why. Uh, let's imagine that the group is c star to power n, just for simplicity, and maximum compact group is u1 to power n. And then consider pluri subharmonic function on. G, which is k invariant, is the same as convex function in Rn. Condition of second derivative is convex function in Rn, which is quotient, yeah, G mod k. And quotient function has only minima, it can have any other uh, uh, types of critical points. Yeah, and uh, the equation for minima. It's actually zeros of uh, some moment map because in this case one can uh, uh, first construct some map from x cross Lie algebra of k to R. You construct a map which will be linear in this thing. You take point, you take element of Lie algebra, and you move point. If you move in direction of k, the value of function will not change. But uh, you take derivative. Uh, derivative of uh, my function f in direction i times k, you can transfer the direction point x, you get certain no real number. So you get a map from x to Lie algebra and it will be Poisson map, so it will be Poisson action and what we are interested, critical points will be four bits, it will be exactly zero, so this Poisson map and what, what here goes on, it's actually a pretty funny story in this case, I can kind of roughly write what will be the collection of, you get closed subset. It will be kind of zero, of, uh, zero, zero of locus set, it will be closed subset, which intersect exactly each closed orbit once. And so this horrible uh, set, which was kind of not convex, not closed, is contracted to close guy. Yeah, so it's kind of uh, very beautiful. Uh, contraction of, of Is there some tropical interpretation? Uh, mm, I don't know, but about tropical I will say very soon okay. something. Um, mm, yeah, so that's uh, uh, So it was story in absolute case <coughs> and in relative case, so a little technicality, but very s small one. Uh, so relative case, again x maps the projectivity to affine y. And you get line bundle here, ample bundle. So we get the same situation. Uh, so on the total space of L minus zero section, uh, 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 we consider uh, again pluri subharmonic function uh, which has 
kind of in local if you locally trivialize this bundle which has a form that f of kind of x t will be some function of x only which will be potential of Keller metric plus log t squared yeah, that's, uh, uh, but there's no canonical potential on the manifold itself, but on total space of bundles, this is canonical such function. And if you change coordinate, you add here t multiplied by invertible function, you get pluriharmonic function, which doesn't change uh, uh, scalar metric. And uh, here one need little technical assumptions on gross property. At in gross property at infinity, if x is not compact, which first will be typically the case, uh, mm, namely choose any compactification by some variety and extend L to x bar. Is line bundle arbitrary again algebraic way, and the property is the following: if you have sequence of points such that limit x i belongs to secret infinity, it goes to infinity, and also choose some kind of lifts to total space, <coughs> total space of line bundle, such that limit of this point will be non-zero vector. In fiber x infinity. Um, now, then we want to ask the following property uh, function of this uh, uh, six on total space divided by log of uh, one over distance in any metric because things is compacted relative xi to the boundary is plus infinity. So it should grow faster than logarithm. It's a very, very mild condition. And uh, this property does not depend on a choice, on choices, which are here, computation, so on. It's intrinsic property. And kind of informal meaning is that if you consider some holomorphic uh, tube, which goes to infinity, it has infinite area. That's exactly this property uh, means. So, so it has some, something to do with probably Foucault categories at the end of the day because... Uh, um, Does it depend on choices? I mean, whose choices? The choices of X bar and extension of line bound. You can make a different extension, get but these conditions are all equivalent. Mm. Mm. So for the case of quivers, uh, 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 this function phi uh, will be, yeah, like in this uh, simple case, maybe I can write what is a phi, because we have trivial bundle, phi will be something like mod b squared plus log t squared, and this is much larger than log t, yeah, a lo log norm of v. Yeah, so it definitely has this gross condition. And what goes on in general situation? You, you, you consider again critical points on the uh, of the whole things on the space, and uh, it can mod out by. I think it will be zeros of moment map from your manifold, and you divide by compact group. So it's kind of so you see, you make it model like closed subset divided by compact group action, which is very nice. Uh, not not this horrible topology. So it will be definitely house door space, and and x in is stable. It's again set of points. Such that uh, up to representatives 
I said that function uh, orbit, this function on orbit is bounded below. Again by this direction. And it polystable and achi it achieves minimum. Yeah, so it's the same story. And what is the advantage of all this uh, uh, Keller story? One can speak about not integer uh, uh, homology classes of two form because in algebraic situation one uh, one is obliged to do integer classes, and if one go to non-integer combinations, it's some kind of tinkering. Uh, you say that if you consider all mm, all various line bundles and try to make uh, joint lattice by Picard, uh, kind of Picard group modular kind of components. You get some lattice. And when it is in the theory of uh, JIT quotient, there are some several walls. There are some kind of piecewise linear structure. And your irrational point could lie in some stratum. And then you say it belongs to this stratum. And here in, the, in, different in so complex geometry, you define uh, it explicitly. Yeah, so, so this is a uh, whole story. Now if you want to apply to representation of cures and get uh, Keller matrix, one sees that there are many, in fact, maybe I'll say there may be too many uh, KG invariant polluted subharmonic functions. And let me just uh, tell you a few words about polluted subharmonic functions. Uh, this polluted subharmonic functions, uh, in general, complex geometry form a sheaf of max plus algebras. Tropical. Yeah, so there's kind of hidden in, in complex geometry, this is automatically tropical geometry, you said. Algebras, because you take it, take some, you take maximum. If you, yeah, because you can allow not necessarily smooth guys, uh, positive as a flaw. It's also invariant under multiplication by positive uh, real numbers. And there are really many of them. You can make like maximum of zero on log uh, some f squared. f is holomorphic function. Is it six? Or you take sum of squares. Or you take beta log one plus sum of squares. When it's uh, not vanished, yeah. Yeah, so there are many, many, many things. Uh, uh, and in quiver case, um, so we want to write some, uh, some, some kind of function depending on uh, representation quiver is metric. You get some arrows, some metrics, and we get some... You know, in space of metrics, or, or, or all representations plus metrics. We want to write some function. Yeah, yeah. And we want to kind of write it in a uniform way. So, so the, um, uh, the function which we write, originally, if space of collection of metrics, uh, I'll, uh, what I really write is somewhere trace T alpha cross with respect to this matrix T alpha, the square of norm. So even the star you take with respect to the matrix. Yeah, it depends on, 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 on the choice of metric, yeah. yeah. And plus, uh, and also of all representations, you can, you can see, see, see simultaneously. And, and plus uh, this standard part, which should be sum over whatever mu i log uh, dead g i, where mu i coming from the stability business, some constant. Yeah, but ma main thing is have kind of this mm, uh, this important part, which is... The first part only depends on the metric up to scale, but not the last part. Yes, 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 yes. The last part, which, uh, it makes it, uh, it changes, yeah. Uh, but um, but one, uh, this first part, one can add many more terms. One can make trace of any expression in T and T star with arbitrary order, can consider free algebra, and take the same expression star. This will be still even more positive. So you get 
huge amount of, uh, call this kind of like psi, this expression, mm, uh, so you get uh, many, many uh, norms. Yeah, usually people start with this quadratic part, but there's really no reason, yeah, one can. No, but uh, what I don't get is that when you take the commutator, it's not positive. I mean no, no, it takes square. Oh, it takes square. Trace of square, I can see the cone, cone, uh, uh, and where commutators come from, mm -hmm. because when you can see the moment map equation now for the story, it means that you start to vary uh, Hermitian forms, uh, norms, norms, and if you vary, then you do not change t, but variation of t will be zero. But t star will be commutator of variation of h, commutator with t star. Uh -huh. And then if you write condition for fixed points, uh, for, for critical points, you get the following things. You, 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 you s take sum over uh, all arrows of commutator t alpha cross, and you take the cyclic expression, it will be cyclic word, Yeah, you take derivative of this. So in the quadratic case, it gives you this. Uh, t, t, derivative will be t. Yeah, t, uh, yeah. But in general, you get some horrible expression, and th then it should be equal to sum over mu i projectors. This will be generalized King's equation. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So you get huge amount of star algebras and kind of. Be so the King's equation is a special case. It, when it is equal to t. Yeah, says t t t, t star. Okay. Yeah, that's quadratic. But this is huge amount of star algebras, and uh, as I told last time, this is actually a very interesting situation. You get many, many star algebras, such as their finite dimensional representations are equivalent to uh, something which, which can def uh, define purely algebraically, same as polystable representation of your original guy. Yeah, so the conjecture is that the star algebras, their completions are the same, so it will be some canonical star algebra depending on this choices. Uh, what you say, so what you say is that you look at the critical points. Yeah, yeah. The critical points will be s uh, representation with these uh, things. Yeah, and this will be critical with respect to the matrix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's a kind of big open question to analyze this how the star algebras are really, in some sense, identified. Yeah, but it's uh, okay. Yeah. So that was was all about. Complex case, now I turn to non Archimedean one. So what goes on in non-Archimedean geometry? Uh, so you get field with a norm, and complete uh, field with a norm, and suppose we have algebraic variety. Uh, then there was a story invented by Vladimir Berkovich. He associated to this as certain uh, locally compact Hausdorff topological space. It's called analytic points of analytic spectrum. It's a uh, space of complex point. And I'll just give you a brief introduction. What, what is it? Yeah, first, if x is affine, yeah, so it doesn't depend on choice of nil potents. It's one can it's, uh, it's really like honest points. If x are fine, this x analytic has uh, two descriptions. Either you can consider space of uh, norms, uh, uh, norms from algebra functions to kind of positive numbers. Multiplicative, Multiplicative yeah, so to get f plus g is less than maximum fg. Uh, fg is fg, norm of 1 is equal to 1, and norm of lambda f 
is equal to norm of lambda in k and f, the lambda is belongs to k. Yeah, so consider just such things. It's it was kind of inspired by Gelfand's theory of C-star algebras, yeah. Oh, I, I, there's another description. Um, you consider equivalence classes uh, of following things. You consider arbitrary extensions of your field with some norm, extending norm on K, and a point in X of K prime. Up to equivalence relation generators that you have common Make make further extensions. If you extend, yeah, and this is just the same story. It's kind of analog of Gilfan's theorem. Yeah, but it's pretty pretty formal game. A and there's third viewpoint on the story. Mm. Uh, third viewpoint is uh, another. It's actually ah, if it's not a fine, you just glue. Open parts gives open uh, to the uh, things, but if X is projective, one can do something else. One can construct the things from kind of different perspective, mm -hmm. namely take all possible and suppose K is has discrete relation, like uh, I don't know, TFT, something like this. Then they choose uh, all possible models over your variety. Mm -hmm. oh, maybe it's even better to say smooth projective, although it's, it's not relevant. But let's, let's take models which have some kind of device with normal crossing. So your variety degenerate to some device with normal crossing. Then you have a model. Then you can construct certain finite polyhedral space. Mm -hmm. It's called Clemens, uh, called Clemens polytop of the model. It, it will be a kind of formal linear combinations of the I will be uh, 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 components of special fibers. It, 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 my variety can be decompose in several pieces of special fiber. And to take linear combinations such that sum of Ti is equal to zero and intersection of D when all Ti non-zero is non-empty. So uh, you take kind of vertex correspond to each divisor, edge when they intersect, triangle with three intersect and so on. You get something of dimension, no more than algebraic dimension of x. You get some simplicial complex. You get simplicial complex, yeah, you get like for, for, for curve you get a graph. Yeah, okay. um, you get dual polytop and now, mm, so it's kind of P, PL space, it's actually linear PL space. And if you make blow up the model, then you add some kind of pieces and you get projective limits of this polytop. You get something which doesn't change homotopy type. Usually you grow some kind of wing from here to here or you, d you get something contractible. So it's projective limit by of this of these polytops. Okay. This is the same. It's the same, yeah. It has nothing to, uh, looks n uh, like nothing to do, but actually at the end of the day is uh, the same. And it's actually much better viewpoint because uh, we are not interested in functions on this guy usually take functions which are induced for some finite model and that you reduce some, some kind of tropical geometry. And <coughs> again, on the space, <coughs> again one get sheaf of pluris subharmonic functions, especially the good one which are induced for some finite model. Yeah, so you get also close to the maximum plus the same story. Yeah, so this tropical geometry is kind of in both cases. In, in, in the sense it's kind of here more tropical than it's kind of more infinite type in complex case, but uh, through yeah, it's a common framework. framework, yeah. So for each variety of so non commute field, you get something like tropical guys automatically. And what does a uh, uh, subharmonic function, I just uh, illustrating class uh, for, for curves, for, for graphs. Uh, if you get a graph and get real valued function, it's uh, pluris subharmonic. Uh, first it's, it should be continuous function in this case mm, and then should be convex on edges. Convex on edges because it has a fine structure. But what happens at vertices? At vertex, sum over 
uh, kind of uh, one-sided derivatives is positive, not negative. Because fun function has one-sided derivatives. I mean, this is what defines the shift. And if you pass to the shift of fractions, then it's no longer positive. Yeah, it's differences, yeah. And pluriharmonic functions are function if you suppose to get functions minus functions are Uh, with a linear and uh, satisfies kind of balanced condition. And Cartier divisors? Yeah, this, yeah, this whole technology, it's now whole business about translating uh, whole uh, geometry. Yeah, so get shift of pluris of harmonic function. Uh, there is a little trouble in all this business. Mm, even compare with complex geometry. Uh, there is no notion of strict pluris of harmonic function. Uh, the second derivative is positive. Mm -hmm. uh, namely, I said that if you take an R n, you get strictly convex function, which is there's no pieces when it's kind of linear. Mm -hmm. uh, one can uh, try to define things, but here there's a falling catch. Uh, you have a curve, mm -hmm. but it's actually a uh, uh, pullback of uh, you, when a contract, you make another model, you just add some extra edge and you just contract to the point. And if you consider any function which is kind of positive convex here, it's con convex here, but it's kind of constant. Yeah, so it's automatically making blow up, it's, it's infinitely many directions, it's still degenerate, yeah. Looks like a, a Mercedes. No, it's, it's, I just wrote, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course one can draw, <laughs> yeah. Uh, one can also have other signs, yeah. So uh, you still degenerate? It means that if you consider a pullback of a convex function here on this domain, a convex function with a fine structure, it will be a function which is constant here. Oh. Its second derivative will be zero. And first derivative will be zero, yeah. Yeah, so there's uh, no notion of strict uh, convexity, so one cannot really speak about strict Keller metrics. It's kind of always will be slightly degenerate. Yeah, and... Mm. Yeah, so... Uh, Um, Marco McCullen, who was a student of, uh, of Bost, uh, a few years ago developed an analog of JIT. Yeah, so one can, uh, and all statements are kind of true. So you consider plus harmonic function is bounded below. Uh, he considered only a kind of um, case of action of compact varieties, but If it's a logarithm growth, I think it's the same story extent. I think it's, yeah, so just literally everything is uh, true. But uh, this is the only kind of catch. You don't have uh, uh, semi-stable points. Uh, those when function f is bounded below on the orbit. But because you cannot speak about strict uh, inequalities, this polystable points, it's kind of, he cannot say anything about this. And in fact, it's maybe not a bad thing, uh, as I explain. Uh, mm, just a second. I think it's actually now a good time to make a small break for five minutes and then I'll continue here. Yeah. It doesn't take the minimum there, that's why it's... Uh, it does take a minimum, it's, 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 it's kind of... Uh, but it's bounded below, so it's... Uh, uh, and uh, this, this, uh, this thing, uh, uh, Alain asked, uh, th uh, there is some uh, tropical representation of Hamiltonian reduction in, in case of... This. Yeah, uh, tropical not, but I, I will go to uh, kind of what is moment map in non-archimedian story, I will go just after the break. Yeah, yeah so now go to quivers in non-archimedian case. And... Um, Uh, what was at the end of last lecture, I just remind you. Last time, last week ago, what, uh, we, we have some, some, something very special. We get non-Archimedean field, we get quiver, but we consider representations which are kind of contracting. Uh, so there is a norm, norm such that all operators has norm less than one. And, uh, <laughs> you choose the norm on the... Yeah, th th no, th this is a choice of norms such that uh, each operator has norms on another one, or equivalent, there exists a collection of norms so that each the alpha operator norm is less than one. Or it can be said in many different ways that uh, without choosing a norm that for any cyclic word, uh -huh. 
are all eigenvalues, kind of spectral radiuses, radiuses less than one, or norm of traces less than one. It's, it's, it's all the same. Yeah, and then for such things, we get, uh, get kind of nice class of kind of harmonic metric, but it was a very boring one. It's a collection of norms. So that uh, uh, each t alpha uh, from the i mu i is has norm less than one. Uh, whatever e i e j e j is presumed norm, and then we can make reduction to the residue field, which I denote somehow reduction to these norms of e is a semi-stable representation of a residue field. It was pretty uh, boring situation. So, so <laughs> it's like being defined over the integers. Integers, yeah, yes, and and uh, this uh, uh, and the theorem was the representation is city semi-stable if only if it admits harmonic metric, which is deformation semi-stable representation. But what to do if this eigenvalue is bigger than one? One should go to something else. And mm. Mm. yeah, one can make kind of again. Uh, try to uh, steal a result from complex numbers. So in complex numbers, there was trace of these things. What will be non-Archimedean analog of this guy? Uh, and you'll see it's actually very, very simple. Yeah, for all complex numbers, if you have two vector spaces, v1 and v2, and with some Hermitian norms, and we get some linear map, uh, then one can always, there exists an uh, orthogonal basis in V1, V2, such that matrix will be diagonal. It will be maybe not rectangle matrix, it will be diagonal matrix. And, uh, and this diagonal terms, one can also choose them to be positive, but take a norms, are just some numbers, which are called singular values. And the same as eigenvalues of square root of t, t cross t. Yeah, it's all completely obvious. What we can do over... So the condition is the same as saying the singular value. Yeah, si uh, uh, yeah ah, for this representation, singular value is one, but then... Uh, uh, this you get something on the representation of the residue field, which is... Uh, and now I cannot achieve it anymore, so the singular values will be less, not less than one. Uh, but if you can define the singular values also by conditioning the operator and the thing at the max. Yes, exactly, yeah. Okay. Yeah, actually, if... Uh, uh, yeah, we, uh, we assume, assume that for simplicity that K has continuous relation. So all real powers. Then the same is true. So we get notion of singular values. Now... Uh, I claim that, for example, the sum of squares, it will be perfectly good choice of a non commutative case as well. But in fact, there are many more choices. Choose any, any function g from r to r, which will be like this. So what will be the properties that g is bigger than 0, g prime is bigger than 0, and actually g double prime is bigger than 0. And limit um, uh, this variable, I don't know how to denote it. Uh, lambda goes to minus infinity, g of lambda will be zero. And limit lambda goes to plus infinity, g of lambda will be plus infinity. Now, for example, exponent of lambda or exponent of two lambda are perfectly good choices. Mm. And uh, the idea is, is to replace trace of t square, trace t alpha, alpha for each alpha, 
by sum over uh, a singular uh, uh, singular values of the separator of t alpha. Uh, you can see the g of log of the singular value. It's minus infinity, you get in minus infinity. Now, so in particular, you get sum of squares because of the exponent of logarithms. Mm. Now, so we can get exactly the same function uh, formula as in the complex case. And the claim it is pluri subharmonic functional space of operators. It's some, um, I don't want to give you proof, but it's uh, one can. On, on maps from v1 to v2. In fact, you can probably write it as a soup of. Uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I think. I think. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, you're right because. It, yeah. Mm, but and now I can try, try apply this uh, Macoulin theorem. Theory. And you get, uh, then uh, I can study for kind of local critical points. What are local critical points? Uh, are critical points of this function. Uh, so, as I explained to you uh, last time, yeah, uh, it will be critical points on the space of product of all vertices of metrizations of this my spaces. And a huge amount of these buildings. And what I explained to you last time is that, although it's kind of a uh, uh, huge horrible space, this tangent space is a certain cone, it corresponds to real filtrations on things over the residue field. Uh, uh, so it's something nonlinear, but it's a space of kind of real flex. And then we can make derivative with respect to real flex and try to calculate what this means the critical points. Mm. And go on to utilization of E i is at some point at point some metrization is will be real flex in finite dimensional space of a residue field uh, G nu E uh, it's vector space or the residue field. And then one can try and analyze what is going on. And if something remarkable happens, it will just substitute the whole thing, so make calculation. Uh, you can interpret what is going on. You get the things that uh, this condition of critical points equivalent that uh, certain representation of certain new quivers are semi-stable. So the things can start to repeat this themselves. It's, yeah, representations of some auxiliary auxiliary viewer with certain stability conditions are semi stable. Yeah, so that's mm. I'll just explain to you in a second. Yeah, so uh, it's something which has to do with this situation. We get this map uh, between two spaces which are not preserving the norm. So kind of unit ball goes to uh, kind of like uh, extend to some direction. Uh, yeah, something small, something big. Yeah, this is this critical. Yeah, so it's, uh, you get in, in sort of uh, ball, you get some kind of ellipsoid and some position of ellipsoid with respect to, to the ball. So it will be some little preparation. I will need to do this, explain this accelerator quiver. The auxiliary parameters of some maps which you get from this picture. Yeah, yeah, I, I will. Uh, you'll see this in, in, in a few minutes. Now, suppose I got map between two vector spaces, and again, continuous relation to simplify my life. Uh, then we know that the picture looks like this. Yeah, I, actually, I don't have to repeat this story, but maybe what I can do, I have this my a log of singular values uh, will be some zero singular values which I ignore, and there will be some some finite amount of 
as a sync wish if map is not zero. And all these diagonal matrix I can kind of ar uh, arrange in the order. So it'll be kind of lambda k here and lambda one at the very end. So I get this order. And now I make a, um, filtrations. There are two filtrations. I get filtrations on source and filtration on target mm, by subspaces. Uh, which are com completely intrinsically det uh, uh, determined. So uh, maybe I denote v1 bar, v2 bar will be uh, uh, spaces over the residue field. Yeah. Uh, um, it should be spaces over the residue field. And the spaces will carry these filtrations. For example, uh, if you have vector in v1 bar, which is not zero, you can see the minimal possible log of norm of the vector v underlying. So it's it's only leading digits, Tv, um, with respect to second space where norm v is equal to one and v is uh, is lift of v bar. And uh, just try to minimize these things. And you get one of the slog lambda i's, obviously. And similarly, for u in u to 0, you can see the maximal possible of inverse stuff. And so it's intrinsically determined filtrations. And, and you get something uh, y1 bar, which is y1 bar less than lambda k. It's because it cannot explain as well. It contains part when you less than lambda k minus one, and so on. It goes to uh, non equal to lambda less than one to one, and then it 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 contain which is equal to uh, mm, and then it contains the part uh, which is minus infinity, which will be reduction of the kernel, which contains in make equal to zero. So there's the last term for kernel, which we don't care. And similar story uh, um, with, v, with V2 bar. Uh, it contains blah, blah, blah. And this things we can uh, 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 arrange to uh, the first things which go to quotient Naturally, it's better to go to quotient. This will be some non-zero map to some non-trivial quotient, and you take you run from and and similar story one get. Inclusions. Yeah, here at the end you get map to zero, but here it could be B zero map. All the other maps on B zero. And here the last guy, its inclusion could be identity. Uh, it's actually non equality map, so non, uh, non zero map, it's really non trivial map, so spaces are different. And the associated graded pieces are equal. So if you can see the kind of uh, they, m they match, but they go in opposite order. And now I draw uh, the graph. Yeah, finally, what is this? What is this axillary graph? Yeah, just before. Um, yeah. So, so if you start with arbitrary quiver. For example, like this. What will be auxiliary quiver? It will have, uh, for this vertex, I get just a bunch of epimorphisms. For this vertex, I get, again, a bunch of epimorphisms. And here, inclusions. 
Number should be length of how many is singular values. It sure, but I mean, it depends. This depends on our presentation. Yeah, yeah. Or one can say this label by real numbers and almost all and only finitely many called set. Sure. You can access like like quiver a a r, <laughs> like thinking quiver the n uh, the base integers by total order set of real numbers. Yeah, something like this. Um, and for this vertex, you get what you get. A uh, few in inclusions. And and one chain of subjection. subjection. Yeah, so it just gets a bunch of flags, nothing else. Mm. So this, this auxiliary quiver is this joint union of the vertices of of Q, of kind of star, star-like quivers. Okay, all decomposed on these simple pieces. And now I write what is the stability structure here. What is central charge of representation of auxiliary quiver? Over the residue field, yeah. Uh, will be sum over all kind of central the central vertices which are the same, so we put here the same spaces, and it'll be Z i dimension. E i or maybe whatever. This, uh, this is just numbers, yeah. It's the same numbers. It's uh, 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 what we have before, and then we get the following correction. It takes some of all inclusions. When Gruber was some negative <coughs> number j, and we take g prime of lambda j, derivative of g, times dimension of co kernel of this inclusion and minus sum of all epimorphism and graded numbers gra graded by lambda j certain number g prime of lambda j the dimension of kernel okay yeah yeah so what is nice uh, g prime is positive yeah it's a positive number, yeah. Mm, if you take sum of all these things, you get the same central charge because the things cancel each other because the dimensions appear in one vertex and another vertex. But stability, it's kind of new quiver, get some new... If you can say the sub-representation sub doesn't come from representation original quiver, so get certain condition. And uh, then the equation, uh, just really straightforward check, I don't want to bother with those details. It goes with exactly the semi stable relation, yeah. Yeah, so that's with, we, we this, uh, yeah. So the theorem, which is we have with my courses, uh, Haydn, Katsark of Pantif, uh, Pandit, and, and me, uh, uh, that, uh, in fact, here it goes r r really. Mm, Semi-stable representations of of quiver of a field K are exactly those which admits a, a harmonic metric, which gives this story kind of harmonic metric, which gives the semi-stable thing of the residual. So it will be this moment map equation. In fact, we went to this in very long way, <laughs> not like this. I have to say that. We try to imitate this flow and so on, and then go for complex numbers to non commutative numbers, and then get fixed points. And then, uh, but at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's one, one can make it much simpler. Uh, yeah, so that's analog of moment map equation. Yeah, <laughs> so in a very strange sense, yeah. So that's uh, tangent bundles, tangent space is non linear, but it's just a cone, but still, at the end of the day, it's the same uh, story. Um, the proof, uh, yeah, there are one have to introduce some topologies, some space of flags. I don't want to, to bother you. It, it's kind of semi-continuity. It's pretty soft proof. Yeah, some just some uh, compactness, semi-continuity, and so on. And there's also a natural candidate for flow for H Harnar Simon flow because uh, for Harnar Simon flow. Uh, mm, uh, in my uh, last talk, I also explained that this is also a flow. And uh, derivative of flow 
should be R filtration. R filtration was hard field filtration of things which have a residue. And here you just use hard field filtration with this axillary query to define as the same yeah, kind of new dot will be kind of hard on a single filtration, but you change to opposite or for, uh, for auxiliary pure in certain sense. And conjecture, the things should exist and produce at the limit hard on a single filtration kind of naturally without choosing slope and so on. So it will be a simple thing, but uh, we kind of got lost in details. It's, uh, I think it's maybe some model theoretic problems because it looks like at some point you should go kind of kind of infinitely many uh, kind of very bad uh, behavior in, in this conical singularities of this set. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. For, uh, uh, for point it will get axillary cure over the small k, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it's, this was kind of essentially one nice clean example in general we have a non-Archimedean geometry. And now uh, what is a general picture? Yeah, I, I'll just go for all the story. Yeah, so for a moment I will forget about this various fields uh, with norms, it will be pure algebraic uh, thing yeah. about uh, stability conditions. So suppose we have triangulated category over some field which could be big k, small k, whatever you want. Uh, maybe I denote it now, small k which could be big K because uh, at the moment I don't care about norms. And uh, if I try to think of kind of natural example like viewers, but more interesting situation from algebraic geometry of Fukai category, there is something in common, kind of very, very robust. Uh, so for any two objects of your category, uh, if you consider home spaces is they are finite dimensional and, and also um, if you consider home from E and shift by uh, kind of, there's no negative effects, is zero for n greater than zero for two objects. Maxim, I, I'm sorry to ask you. What, uh, what does it mean? Yeah, I mean, uh, I know I'm not familiar with this. I, 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 yeah, I, I'll explain in a moment. Yeah, what, what is it? Mm. Then great categories like uh, complexes of modules over over some algebra. It's an no, it's not a billion. No, no, it's not a billion. So it's additive. It's additive. Yeah, it's, it's definitely not a billion, and uh, uh, it's uh, the stability structure gives a relation with a billion category. But it's uh, like all complexes, and then consider the complexes in constructed in zero. Ah, not not complexes which are which are positive. It's all complex. Yeah, both in the positive and negative could be. Yeah, but here. Uh, uh, and uh, the main thing is that for any two objects you consider x groups and this is shift. It means it's like, like x minus n, something like this, roughly. Oh, so there is, a, there is a way to shift. Okay. Yeah, there is, yeah, you can always shift objects and, and there is a notion of exact triangle, yeah. Okay, that's all. That's all, yeah, that's it. You can shift and so it means that if you consider x groups between objects, it will be zero in negative degrees. It's the hypothesis and, and something finite dimensional in positive degrees. Like for usual, consider like modules of finite dimensional algebra, finite dimensional modules are only positive facts, it's not negative. But you shift, you get formally uh, x in negative degrees here. And, uh, and second thing, story is that it, it makes sense to speak about families of objects. Parameterized by schemes. And uh, technically, it means that you get 
uh, something or maybe DJ schemes and there's some cool technology. We got some kind of. Is family still uh, 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 time grade category? Yes, yes, yeah. Or one can say it's a shift on some to uh, whatever. Topos, yeah, it's yeah, yeah as, as you like, yeah, but uh, yeah, but it's it's kind of abstraction. Um, uh, what are we? Uh, what really all this means? Yeah, it's it's abstract, abstract uh, story, but uh, what it really means? It's kind of basic example, which are more or less efficient for all me uh, things. Suppose you have a differential graded algebra over field K, which has the following form. You can see the free algebra is in infinitely many, countably many variables. Where for any i differential of each variable is expression in previous variables. Kind of step by step you add more and more variables. Uh, this is very general, it's called quasi-free resolution. Any countably dimensional thing has quasi-free resolution, just start to enumerate things in some way. But the main property is that now we want to this degrees of these variables goes to minus infinity. Could be some few uh, positive degrees, but eventually it should go to minus infinity. So you can which is how do you define degrees here? Uh, it's uh, uh, it's z-graded algebra, and you for each variable you choose a degree, a priori. For each variable you choose some integer number, and the expression should be homogeneous, so this degree of this guy should be degree of xi plus 1. Yeah, so... Uh, uh, and this category C, which you consider, uh, one can make it's pretty, pretty uh, very explicit. I can give you some kind of uh, definition which is abstract, but it's much more concrete. Uh, DB and of kind of a DG A modules. You can see the DG modules which have which are finite dimensional over uh, your field K. Mm -hmm. What does it mean? It's actually something very Concrete, you get f f finitely many vector spaces, kind of like v minus three, whatever v minus two, whatever. Sorry. Uh, derived. derived. <laughs> okay, whatever it means. But what, what really means? Uh, you, 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 you have, you do the following. You consider finite, like I don't know, five finite dimensional vector spaces. Then you should inter uh, then, the uh, the the then you want to introduce what is a differential with d square equal to zero. Then you write want to write operator x one. It's operator of certain degree which is degree of x one, which should be commuted with differential because d or maybe d of x one it could be constant even yeah. But okay, yeah. You you should solve the equation for x one. Operator of certain degree. That is the degree of zero or constant is zero. Right? Zero, yeah. yeah. So I if I if x one of degree minus one could have d x one is equal to one, so you should have operator here r decreasing degree one, so whose differential is equal to one. Then I choose something for x two. Step by step, you want to write d of x two is some expression, x three and so on. But then, uh, when uh, degree x is very strong, there's no room for the separator. There's no no operator of degree minus hundred here. Yeah, so you just stop at some point. It's, uh, okay. Yeah, so you get only finitely many variables and finitely many equations. I see. Yeah, so it's something very concrete and should be computer software for this, I suppose, yeah. And mm, then one can define what are morphisms, homotopies, and it's everything is very explicit and completely concrete and finite dimensional. Mm. And, and the story contains as particular cases Uh, some categories which uh, defined kind of heavy way through toposes, blah, 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 and like derived category with compact support on uh, separated scheme of finite type. One can always find such description. Yeah, here, in fact, one can also use quivers instead of free algebras. It's all the same because one can make 
resolutions. And you see, this in this case, when we want to describe water models, you really solve finitely many equations, finitely many variables, so you can speak of parameters, things depending on parameters. So it's completely clear that you get speak of families of such guys. Um, and what we want from stability structure on this thing? I mean, there must be a universal family, I presume, or so. Yeah, it will be inductive limit of things of finite right. type. Yeah, because you start to make these things of larger, larger dimension. Uh, you should, shouldn't change your characteristic, but you, it's complex, but I'll say. Um, mm, what we want from stability structures? Mm. First of all, the central charge uh, should be equal to the following. It will be finite C linear combination of something uh, of additive maps from from K group of this category to Z, which given by the following thing, E goes to earlier characteristic and I write it kind of abstract, a certain functor applied to E, the functor is functor to um, dwarf of K, sorry, technology, it's finite complexus of finite dimensional vector spaces, given by E goes to our home of certain PI to E, PPI is a perfect complex of A. It's something like algebra itself or direct sum of, of sum of copies. It's like finite dimensional projective module. And I denote by I uh, because in real life. But this is choice. Isn't it? it's some cho you make some choice. Yeah. yeah. You choose some um, things, uh, perfect complexes, which are roughly, you describe your algebra replaced by quiver. It's it's more it's uh, one can say that's kind of uh, in this abstract way, but uh, a more concrete way, you it will be not digital algebra, it will be pass algebra or quiver, <laughs> and that will be just dimension of representation in each vertex, nothing else, early characteristic in each vertex. Yeah, so it's um, this abstract story about perfect complex. It means DG quiver, nothing else, nothing else, and. Uh, it's uh, one thing which we would like to have, and second, that uh, then when we consider object with certain slope and with certain class, the gamma is collection of gamma i. I don't know, the i runs through this set. Essentially, vertices so occurs, and gamma i are this earlier characteristic, is my point. Let's say the sum of the i. Gamma i is exponent of. Ah, so that's the whole story will be really like a quiver. Then this uh, thing sh should be uh, not huge infinite inductive limit. It will be some kind of something of finite class. You, you can describe by things of some bounded uh, description. Uh, so it will be called art and stack of finite type. Roughly, uh, some scheme of finite type divided by finite dimensional group. So, so sorry, what, what does mean? Sorry? Which one? The space of objects, okay. or, 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 or semi-stable objects. Uh, Should maybe still in the yeah, but. Uh, I'm not op optimistic, maybe int still. And this should be open in, or should be the risky open in the space of all objects. Uh, and uh, why it's art and stacks? There's this whole story of higher stacks because uh, when considers in this triangulated categories, the object can have negative x to itself. You have automorphisms, but then have automorphisms of automorphisms. 
uh, in principle. And then it means that you should divide not by group, but then you should divide by kind of group, uh, again, by um, have not pi 1, but pi 2 of modulus space and so on. But for semi-stable objects, we are lucky because for semi-stable object, it falls from British axiomatic, there's no negative acts to itself. So they just divide by group and you don't have to do this high homotopy uh, theory at all. So you're dividing by group wide here? By group, by action of a group, yeah. But not, uh, not divide by two group in a sense. Yeah, so it's kind of, and I think one should have kind of coarse, mod uh, should have coarse modular space. When you consider uh, something like this is JT quotient. which will be no, no longer a stack, but a ordinary, maybe singular, but a reduced, reduced, separated, that means Hausdorff uh, uh, scheme, or maybe it's called algebraic space. Mm. And uh, the set of k bar points of this guy will be the same as polystable objects, isomorphism classes of polystable objects in, uh, in the sense, in this language you can make extension of scalars because you just <laughs> consider a bigger field, so it's uh, in this big categories. Yeah, so this all. Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, make this algebra by uh, which I remove it, put here k bar. Yeah, that's it. Now, so get uh, again, one can think about uh, curves, but what I claim is that by pure categorical means on, on this uh, coarse modular space, I will have a kind of Keller class. It follows just purely from stability axiomatics. Uh, I don't know, just a second. So the claim that this is the canonical uh, class omega belongs to the car group of this. And moreover, the integral of this class over, over any compact curve is bigger than zero. Now, this one can reduce from axiomatics, yes. Yeah, so somehow the relation of ordinary algebraic geometry. Uh, 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 so very general framework, yeah. Coarse modular space, yeah, I uh, kind of consider quotient of the stack, which is or, uh, um, kind of categorical quotient. You take the picker group also. Oh, yeah, how is this picker here? <coughs> yeah. This is some group, I'll just tell you about real numbers. Uh, so it's kind of candidate to class of Keller form. And what is the formula for omega? Yeah, first of all, for any this, uh, whatever, kind of vertex of the quiver, I'll say i, I have a line bundle. on space of objects uh, and fiber at some object E is determinant of this f complex Fi of E, uh, oh, our home, yeah, Fi. And if you act by rescaling, because it's natural things associated to object, you multiply by, consider automorphism, multiply by constant. How it will act here? It, it will multiply by lambda to times the earlier characteristic of this guy. Okay. Mm, but now, consider kind of virtual line bundle on ob objects of C sigma, or kind of semi-stable like sigma. You consider virtual bundles, you should be formal Power product of real tensor powers, which don't make sense in algebraic geometry, but uh, 
namely take tensor power of Li and transcribe by real number, not integer, which is uh, imaginary part exponent minus theta Zi. And what is nice here, when you calculate your scaling, the whole thing here cancels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Acts trivially. And uh, uh, I didn't check, but it looks very plausible, at least for polystable uh, rescaling, it's kind of simplest automorphism, but there are other automorphisms. I think all automorphisms act trivially here. On this rescaling, and then one have kind of virtual line bundle on the quotient. Mm -hmm. Well defined. What do you mean by virtual? You mean you're cancelled by R? Yeah, yeah, it's kind of. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, for example, one can speak about norms on these guys, yeah. Or yeah, so. do you take tensor by R, the object no, 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 is yeah. It's kind of formal, formal. <laughs> game, yeah. Formal yeah. 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 Yeah, and, but this guy, so you get some uh, first chain class. It will be first chain class of this L, maybe L sigma called this guy, a sigma, will be, you just uh, see what, what is going on, it's sum over I, this real coefficients, mislated to C sigma, it should be a certain real co combination of guys, and I claim that this will be my omega, in fact it will be minus Omega, better if I want to have the specificity. The claim is I have this inequality. Let's me explain this. Uh, uh, this uh, it's, it belongs to Picard group tens R. It's real numbers, it's elements of Picard group. Yeah, this is now it's kind of makes uh, essentially perfect sense. So y integral of omega over some curve y, compact curve y is positive. Yeah, so what, what does it mean that you have a curve? And now now uh, some little mental equilibristic will be for a while. So I get a curve. Uh, uh, so, so I have a map from curve to this coarse modulus space, which was contracting of of this uh, uh, of uh, actual stack. Yeah. So it's. I think one can choose yeah. at least. <laughs> yeah, it's some kind of proper map, and you lift for proper curve. Yeah. It's it's subjective map, yeah. Why, why not to yeah, for curve? Uh, it's not unique. Choose a lift. <laughs> yeah, at uh, least in kind of real life situation, I see <laughs> don't see this no problem at, at all. Choose a lift. It's not canonical. And what does it mean that we have before we have kind of isomorphism class of representation, we have actual family of representations of my qu whatever quiver. Okay, so we get a family of object, family of objects, parameterized by points on a curve of semi-stable objects. Okay. Uh, now, um, a bit kind of quantum leap. Uh, imagine it like you have a representation of curves depending on point on a curve. One take R gamma at each vertex and get again a representational cure. Again, finite dimensional. Yeah, and it works in at least in this concrete example, which I I think I raised. It's some object of category C. Mm. Ah, there are many tricks how to do it pre algebraically, but uh, uh, um, at least it's pretty clear one what you want to do in this concrete example. For example, you can multiply by ample line bundles, take sections and blah, blah, blah. And so it's there are many, many things. What will be the central charge of this guy? 
let's calculate it. Yeah, first of all, is by definition it's sum over i, this number z i times earlier characteristic of phi i e dot. And what is earlier characteristic of phi i e dot? It was some space of Holmes, uh, or you can think more concrete in terms of curves. It's a characteristic of R gamma of uh, coherent shifts on curve Y, where fiber is Fi applied to Ey. Okay, so we get some kind of complex of vector bounds on the curve. <coughs> now to use riemann rock theorem, mm. Rock theorem, then you get two terms. It's uh, integral of Y over degree of this bundle, first chain class of this thing, or complex of bundles, which is the same as integral of y from chain class of Li, because it and determines. Of the curve. Yeah, and plus one minus genus of the curve, multiplied by rank at any point, which was essentially my number gamma i. Yeah. Now, substitute. This, this thing cancels. cancels. Yeah. And what you get? Uh, you, you get this integral of one. It's my, it was the definition. So what, what you get? You get up to minus sign, because I define minus sign, is integral of omega of my class omega. Uh, uh, this. this the ah, no, 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 not central charge. Exponent of. Uh, this visible part of central charge is equal to six, yeah, this real number because central charge is a complex number. Mm. Okay, now we want to prove that this number, whatever is negative or, or this positive, why, why, it's, why it's so. Uh, here, this is the argument. I claim that this object E total, uh, when you make current infiltration, has slopes between theta and theta minus pi only. Uh, what is the intuition? Just forget, uh, let's consider the simplest possible case, vector spaces. E will be trivial one-dimensional complex vector space. When you consider commodity, it gets commodity in degree 0 and 1. And 1 in this language goes to shift by, mi by minus pi. Yeah, this, uh, this argument it was kind of minus pi times degree. It was the language. Yeah, so the claim is that all terms in Harnas infiltration of E total have slopes in interval theta minus pi theta. Uh, yeah, so there's some kind of maximal and minimal. We should prove that both of them, I think, we have kind of maximal, which maps non zero map. It's kind of morally embedding to E total. And then it projects to E sigma minimal. Th that's uh, two, two extreme points of my Hartz filtration are like this. And I want to prove that sigma maximum, sigma minimal lies in this interval. Yeah. It's, it goes by contradiction. So assume that sigma maximum is bigger than sig sigma. So I go along this interval. So what I get? I get H0 of our home of E sigma max to E total is on 0. But this R home E tot is uh, R gamma of my curve, uh, and what I should put here, I get, get point-wise R home. Y. And this point-wise, my axiom of stability, uh, I sit in degree greater than 1, and the total homology also in degree greater than 1. So I don't, can't have anything degree 0, so I get contradiction. And, and similar for but uh, negative uh, other case, but it's a bit 
tricky actually for other case. Uh, mm. uh, now assume that dt minimum is less than sigma in spite. You also want to get contradiction. So we get zero not equal to our home e dot sigma minimum. And at least kind of in concrete case it's true and uh, I don't know this is that general state it's h h zero you multiply by canonical class shift by one it's some kind of serial duality here hidden our home pointwise now this guy sits in degree two here shift by one in degree one and here's again in degree one you get again contradiction yeah so what what is the conclusion so in this harness infiltration we have object only in some sector so if it rises sector sigma it will be sigma it will be sigma minus pi and here we get kind of contribution of vectors only in this side so so this the central uh, yeah so the central yeah. charge st stays here and you see immediately that integral imaginary part of exponent minus i theta the central charge if you rotate it here it goes down it's less than zero no I, I, I always multiply by this exponential minus C theta was my slope which I fixed uh -huh. and here I do I, I always rotate uh -huh. things by exponent minus theta yeah, so get one six, and one can analyze if it's equal to zero, then the six will be degenerate curve. So it's yeah, so it looks like you really want to have um, a Keller class. Yeah, so it was um, I discovered this argument many years ago, and for me it was kind of very good science. This all bridge like semantics, which uh, kind of very very formal things, somehow interacts with algebraic geometry, but very simple one, one dimensional. It doesn't need high dimensional algebraic geometry only for curves, but it's about something non commutative. The whole story, and it produces automatically ample class. Yeah, so, and then uh, the kind of general idea is the following that uh, uh, this, uh, this bridge stability gives a lot of varieties with ample classes, this space of polystable objects, which you like weavers, so usually polystable guys in such and such dimensions. And JIT uh, uh, theory says that uh, if you fix some kind of formula for Keller metric, you produce natural Keller metrics in complex or non-archimedian case. And so the idea should be some kind of underlying notion of non-commutative Keller geometry. Uh, some triangulated category with something such that on e each model space you get natural Keller metrics, not just Keller classes. And then maybe flow and uh, all, all this Donaldson machinery. Ah, so it's a uh, very general uh, theme of, of this sort. And we have this nice examples with quivers, mm -hmm. uh, which are more or less clean. And in the last two lectures, I, I will show we'll go completely different class of examples, uh, uh, kind of more differential geometric nature. Mm -hmm. When you get the same, uh, just uh, you get naturally again the scalar metrics and so on on non recommended guys, but uh, have nothing to do with quivers and more with special Lagrangian manifolds and so on. And uh, the end will be essentially no serums after <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> it will be spe speculative, but um, all the story with flows and so on will have completely parallel just to in incarnations, quiver like and some differential geometry. Okay, thank you. Uh? So, so all these evolutions or compact curves, so if you have, if you like for parabolic bundles, if you just have some puncture, then can you see it too? No, no, it's compact curve in, in a model space of objects. It's not the curve on which the bundle is. Ah, okay. Uh, it's some, something in model space of, of objects, not a curve. Yeah.